Today's scripture comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophecy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and the tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, as we are preparing for our annual stewardship campaign, as well as Thanksgiving, we are going to insert gratitude into our lives, which is exactly what those brackets around the word gratitude mean. Next Sunday is All Saints, where we will insert saintly gratitude into our lives. On November 10th, 17th, and 24th, we're going to cast a vision for our church to be those deep, daring and daily disciples, especially in terms of our stewardship of our gifts. The Insert Gratitude study guides are now available for faith groups as well as for individuals. And so we would invite you to pick one of those up. They can be found outside of the, the table, outside of the office upstairs, or they're right on the faith group's table outside in the foyer. For those who are online, we invite you to check out our online resources, and you can find that there. Now, as we begin this new sermon series, today we're going to remember how the Spirit led Ezekiel to a vision, a vision of dry bones, and he is invited to prophesy to those bones to hear the word of the Lord, who will give them breath. In what areas are we experiencing dry bones and needing that Spirit's breath? And how might we insert hopeful gratitude for the future? In that spirit, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This weekend I want to invite us to travel across the world to Sedlik Ossuary, also known as Kosnitsi. It's a church outside of Prague in the Czech Republic. Kosnitsi literally means bone church. According to tradition, a priest traveled to the Holy Land during the Middle Ages and returned with soil from places where Jesus had walked. The priest sprinkled dirt in the church cemetery, and as word spread, people wanted to be buried in this place. But during the Thirty Years' War and a time of the plagues, there were simply too many bodies, and they made a mass grave. Over a century later, the mass grave was found when they were beginning to build a new church. The architect decided not to change the location, but to incorporate the bones of over 40,000 people into the decor of the new church. The pictures of Kosnitsi say it all, don't they? And one more picture. 
Carissa, one of my friends from Oklahoma, once visited Kosnitsi and described that garland of skulls, the large chandelier made from various bones, as well as the altar decor, that the entire church was filled with. And when Carissa was asked how this made her feel, she said that it was really hard to describe, but the best way is to say it was like a bad accident. You slow down to look, but you can't tear yourself away. Now, perhaps more than any other place in the world, Kosnitsi embodies this passage from Ezekiel. When all they see is dry bones, signs of death all around them as they try to worship and praise God. So this weekend, we are going to go back in time to the Valley of the Dry Bones, claiming an important vision for that day as well as for our day. So there was a time in our faith history when there was a man named Ezekiel, which means God strengthens. He is described elsewhere in the word as a priest, a pastor, and a prophet to go to the people Israel. In fact, in the second chapter of Ezekiel, the Lord Yahweh says, I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The bottom line is that Israel sinned against God. They refused to trust. They refused to believe. And now they were wallowing in their sorrows as exiles in Babylon. They lost their their land. They lost loved ones. And they needed someone like Ezekiel. So as Ezekiel the prophet was encouraging and ministering to the broken people Israel, this is a powerful vision. And in it, he described that it was the Spirit of God that led him to a valley of bones. And as he looked around, he saw nothing but bones. And he said that they were very dry. Then Yahweh asked Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel the prophet could see dry bones, so he had to wonder what the Lord God meant by the question. Ezekiel answered, Sovereign Lord, only you know. Only the God who created heaven and earth could see beyond those dry bones and know what would happen next. Then Yahweh told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. What in the world? Now, to a prophet who was used to words falling on dead ears... That wouldn't, that wouldn't hear, and to those hearts that wouldn't change, Ezekiel had to wonder, what was the point of prophesying to dry bones? Yet Yahweh insisted that these dry bones would hear the word of the Lord. Yahweh would cause breath to enter in and cause them to live. And then flesh and muscles and skin would come together miraculously, and these bones would live again. So during this vision, Ezekiel prophesied what he had been told, and there was this mighty noise as these bones started clicking and clacking together. Now I wonder how many of you are singing dem bones in your head, right? Okay, so let's do it. Ready? I need some, I need some music, so here, provide the music. Hip bone connected to the back bone. Sing with me. Back bone connected to the shoulder bone. Shoulder bone connected to the neck bone neck bone connected to the head bone now hear the word of the lord right yet ezekiel realized that as these bodies came together in this vision they were bodies that had no breath so ezekiel was then instructed to prophesy to the breath so that they could live And beginning in verse 11, the Lord God tells Ezekiel what all of this means. These bones represent the house of Israel. People who are now saying, our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. So again, I invite you to imagine God's people in exile in Babylon. It was truly the stuff of horror stories for them. Their bones ached to be in the promised land again. Their minds longed for their hope to be restored. Their spirits longed to feel connected with the Lord their God, Yahweh. And the prophet is told what his response is too. To know that Yahweh is with them. 
that Yahweh will bring life back into their lives, bring them back into their land. I will put my spirit in you and you will live, declares the Lord God. As Ezekiel's vision ended, we know that this gave Ezekiel a renewal of his faith. He was able to insert hopeful gratitude into his tasks so he could continue to encourage the exiled, exiled people Israel who needed an extra measure of hope at that time. And in the remaining chapters of Ezekiel, God's people experienced restoration of the temple and the priesthood. And the people were restored that the name of their city would be, The Lord is There. Now, just as the prophecy was important to God's people in ancient Israel, these words can speak to us today. Because certainly there are times that you and I find ourselves in the valley of the dry bones, facing challenges with health and or relationships, facing transitions with jobs and or aging, facing the loss of, of hopes and dreams. These are are times when you and I might feel distracted and distant, even lost and alone, and yet our God is with us. You and I can claim that the Lord Yahweh will move us from those images of dry bones to images of, of breath and life. And when it seems like all hope is gone, God says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. There's been a very specific memory that has been on my mind and heart and spirit this past week. In my very first appointment, there was a season of juggling. That's what I called it. I called it juggling. I was juggling two small children. I was juggling a commuter farmer husband. I was juggling two very small churches. And I was also juggling seminary. To say that I was overwhelmed is, yes, it's true. But I realized that more than feeling overwhelmed, that there were times that I felt very much alone. And I came to a very desperate place. Looking back, I was probably far more depressed than I cared to admit. So in that depression, I called a woman from another congregation in town who was a pastor's wife. Her husband had recently passed away. Our paths often crossed at the post office and at community gatherings. So I called her and I said, could I stop for a visit? And she insisted that I immediately come over. When I got to her front door, I remember that she just opened the door and opened her arms. And I remember that I just fell into her arms. And she said, I know, I understand. It is going to be okay. She then made me some coffee, and she fed me pie. <laughs> in those quiet moments of tears and more tears and bites of pie in between, I was able to acknowledge in those moments that my bones were dried up. My hope was waning, and in many ways I felt cut off. But it was this acknowledgement of my pain that was exactly what I needed in that moment to find my breath again. Whenever I find myself feeling like I'm in a valley of dry bones, I have to reset myself. I need to remember who I am and, and whose I am. And remembering that the Lord God Almighty created even me is amazing and it's humbling at the same time. Perhaps you have felt this way. But recently, I saw a video describing the name Yahweh. I've used that name a lot in this message today. Just a reminder that this is the Hebrew name for the Lord God, appearing over 6,500 times in the Old Testament. The name Yahweh means, I am who I am. It is sacred. It is never to be taken in vain through speaking or writing. And now, when we spell the word Yahweh, we may think of spelling it Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E but it is actually best spelled with only four letters. Y-H, 
W-H. Now this is where the video got interesting. When we take a breath, it sounds like the name of the Lord, God, Yahweh. Breathe in. <gasps> breathe out. <sighs> Let's do that together. Ready? Breathe in. <gasps> breathe out. <sighs> At the moment that we are born and we take our very first breath, Whose name can be on our lips and in our being? Yahweh. And at the moment of our death and our final breath, whose name can be on our lips and in our being? Yahweh. Remember, though, that this is our choice to claim Yahweh's name and breath and life throughout our journey. I want you to hear again verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. And from verse 14, Yahweh says, I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. When we are facing these dry bones in our lives, the Lord may be speaking through an earthly prophet of our day, asking the question, can these bones live? And perhaps your response in, in pain and sorrow, in political rest and chaos is, Lord, only you know. These are the kind of moments that we need to insert hopeful gratitude. The Holy Spirit can remind us that the Lord Yahweh is ready to provide exactly what we need to get back on track in terms of our spiritual journeys and our faith. And we can be very grateful for that. But there's another dimension to this as well. I want you to think about a church. You might be thinking of the church universal. You might be thinking of about a particular faith community of your past. Or you may be thinking of this particular faith community. As we seek to live out Christ's commission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world... What do we see before us? Do we see dry bones or do we see living bones? We know that vitality is important, and you and I always want to do more, don't we? And yet there are, there are bones among us that are tired and weak. There are bones that feel like they cannot be stretched any farther. Even so, the Lord Yahweh asks can these bones live? Did you know that roughly 1% of the nation's 350,000 churches close each year? That's an estimated 3,500 churches. This is representing all denominations that close each year. We may be saddened by this fact or even shocked, yet this is a reality in our day as there are too many dry bones that are in need of the breath of the Spirit to renew and to refresh. Yet for some churches, their dry bones live to tell another story. I read a powerful, powerful article from the New York Times titled, New Spirits Rise in Old Repurposed Churches. Let's hear how some churches are finding new life. Cafe Appalachia is housed in what used to be St. John's United Methodist Church in South Charleston, West Virginia. The church still owns the building, and in addition to a restaurant, they provide employment training for women in recovery from opioid addiction. Esplanada Studios is a recording studio housed in the former Third Presbyterian Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was established eight years after Hurricane Katrina. The Audible Company designed a unique workspace for their digital audiobook and podcast service in the former Second Presbyterian Church in Newark, New Jersey. No, I did ma not make up the names of these churches. But most of the employees are discouraged from calling it a church, but they prefer, they prefer Innovation Cathedral. I like that. The Preacher's Son is a restaurant and bar in the former Bentonville United Methodist Church in Arkansas. Owner Matt Cooper noted that on his father's side, they were all Methodist ministers. But on his mother's side, they were all in the restaurant industry. So he said it's a perfect combination of both, and he leans on local farms and butchers for ingredients. 
Cooper said, what a church does is provide a place to gather and to support each other. Now these spaces are doing that with food, with resources, with services, and yet these reimagined spaces are making a difference in their respective communities. Can these bones live? Yes, of course they can. Now, for Faith Westwood United Methodist Church, this past month has been one of saying goodbye to what we have known in our low, lower level of our building, Love and Learn Daycare and Preschool. For 30 years, that space has been occupied with a specific vision and purpose. 16,000 square feet is over there. And now we are invited to move beyond those images of rooms filled with childcare equipment to imagine future possibilities. How is the Lord God Yahweh going to inspire us and, and challenge us to use that space for mission and expanding the Faith Works Pantry, for developing new ministries, for developing new community partnerships? Maybe, just maybe, all of the above. 16,000 square feet of potential possibilities and opportunities to be Christ's hands and feet. The prophet Ezekiel and the vision of the dry bones needs to speak to us this weekend to remind us that as the Lord God's people, there are others in, our, in a very broken world that need to see people who have been raised to new life through Jesus and, and that are ready to bring breath and life into a weary world. And there are others in our broken world who need to insert hopeful gratitude to allow them to experience the Spirit's power and presence. If this feels a little daunting, brothers and sisters, remember that when hope is gone, Yahweh says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. So just breathe in and breathe out. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, as we are breathing you in and breathing you out this day, we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the witness today of Ezekiel at the Valley of Dry Bones because the Sovereign Lord only knows what is going on in our lives, those spaces and places where the bones feel very dry right now. And yet, the words today remind us that you are going to allow your spirit to be in us and we will live. So allow that breath to move in us and around us and through us. May your spirit live in Faith Westwood, United Methodist Church, and in all of the mission and ministries that we have before us all the things that have been done in the past and all the things that are yet to be. And God, today we pray with those who are rejoicing and celebrating and we pray for those who are mourning and hurting. God, we remember the near misses in our lives. When things could have been a different way, and we thank you for your hand of protection. But God, open our eyes and ears and, and hearts so that we don't miss any of the opportunities that you are calling us to be a part of. For when you ask, can these bones live? Spirit, help us to say yes. God, all of this we pray. In the name of the one who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 